Okay, hello everybody. Welcome. We're on the next one, which is under development for unit six is the social emotional development. And we are going to be looking at Erickson's stages of development. And so key guy you need to know is Eric Erickson, very easy name to remember. And he basically um, created these social emotional development um, stages in which there is basically two possible outcomes that can happen during these stages. Now, uh, we're gonna start. Now, I need you to make sure to leave some space that you should not just leave two little bullets. I will be adding some stuff as we go, as well as I'm gonna show you guys a chart that you need to include. You could either write it here or create your own chart, which you're gonna be adding the pros and cons, right? Like the positive outcomes or the negative outcomes of each of these things. So basically what he's saying is that in each of these stages, you're gonna have one thing versus another, okay? And you could have any of those two outcomes basically, okay? So we're gonna start with the first one, which is trust versus mistrust. And this happens between birth from baby all the way to one and a half years old, about give or take. And this is the part where the baby's basic needs need to be met. So which are comforting, food, warmth, that attachment happens during this time. Now, the basic crisis during this stage, and we're also writing this down, is going to be that someone is going to care for them. This is why it's so important when a child cries, a baby cries, that you go to them and try to comfort them as much as possible. Um, because if not, what they feel is that mistrust, which is essentially, they feel that they're being abandoned, um, creates that anxiety, okay? Parents need to consistently and successfully meet the child's needs, the infant's needs, so that the child can learn to trust the environment that they live in. Um, and so that's why it is not good. Just let the baby cry, you know, they let, tell them, oh, if now you're gonna spoil them. No, not true. It is so important to comfort the baby when they are crying. They are not learning to not, not like be spoiled. They're actually um, learning to trust the environment, okay? Then just leave some space so that there are pros and cons. Then we're gonna go to, um, and so obviously like if the trust isn't um, created, then mistrust um, derives from that. But these things are gonna have a, an effect as the person gets older, okay? You know what, let me just <clears throat> show you guys here, right? What it looks like when it comes to the successful outcome. Successful outcome for a child that their trust is being um, answered, then they're going to trust the people and the world in them. The unsuccessful outcome would be that they are a sense of distrust and they do not believe that um, others can be, you can depend on other people basically, okay? Then we're gonna go on to the next one, which is going to be autonomy versus shame and doubt. And this happens about from one and a half years old to about two, two or three years old, okay? And this is, this is the part where they are starting to explore their independence, they're testing others, right? That's that autonomy. Then the versus part is that they, they doubt or feel shame when they are trying to do something so they doubt that they could be successful. Okay, some basic crisis or basic moments that are happening during this time is they are like potty training tends to be a time. This is also they're trying to assert their independence through exploring and testing their limits. And as a parent, you want to allow them to have that autonomy showing that independence um, but at the same time, you know, giving them boundaries. You can't just be like, okay, do whatever you want, right? You need to kind of give boundaries and allow them to be independent in, um, excuse me, 
when they in a safe place, right? So like, for example, allowing the child if they want to dress up, um, instead of giving them the whole wardrobe, right, you're giving them options like, okay, um, here are the two clothes outfits you can pick, pick one, and it gives them that autonomy. Okay, um, very important um, moment is the potty training, make sure to write that down. Potty training, you do not want to be shaming them, allowing them to know, like, giving them that independence that they can go even when they make a mistake that you're not shaming them when they do it okay now leave some space again for excuse me for the space of the positive outcomes and the negative um and we'll show that after just for time's sake the next one is going to be initiative versus guilt and this is when a child is from three to five years old and this is when they start initiating, right? And then following through, you want them to do that. Then the versus part is the guilt. So they feel guilty when others basically discourage their behavior. So like if they want to um, try something new or they want to copy you, you don't like make them feel guilty in doing that, okay? Now, they want the ability, another thing you're adding, ability to initiate activity and then see those activities through. So let's say they want to clean their room, you know, and they're like, I want to clean my room, and then allowing them to do that and not making them feel guilty um, if they do it incorrectly. Um, now, this guilt happens when the parent is discouraging of the child's initiative okay um typically parents must forbid inappropriate behaviors right obviously um however you want to make sure it's in a manner that does not make them feel guilty for initiating the activity okay um and then leave for successes and unsuccessive outcomes the next one that we're going to talk about is industry versus inferiority. This is when they are about um, six to 11 years old. And here is peers. Their peers and schools are very, very important during this time. They're learning the skills and feelings of competency based on comparison of their peers, okay? And then how, or they can feel the opposite, which is they may feel inferior to their peers, okay? So some basic crisis or things that they're dealing with is learning new skills or learning the skills of their, like their culture, their environment, such as school. Um, if they're in any extracurricular activities, this is also, um that time they start testing um themselves right like in school in their extracurricular and there's a lot of comparison with their peers this is um little drawback this is typically the time like here in florida where in third grade the kids um they fail when they don't pass um the oh, i forgot what well, my my day was like fca or uh, FSA, right? So now it's the same concept. Now, what I saw, because I worked with a lot of kids with that had um, learning disabilities, so they had a hard time with that, is many times when they failed and they had to stay in third grade again, a lot of them felt so inferior, like their self-esteem from one year to the next, you saw them like just totally collapse, you know? Like, we gotta do better for these kids and you notice that that's kind of the age if you're you're not as successful as other people then you tend to kind of draw back from school okay leave some space again for the outcomes the next one is identity versus identity confusion and this is where all of you guys are at this particular moment so this starts about adolescent time from 12 to about 20 years old and this is when they're asking themselves who am i um, what is my role in, in my environment um, versus a lack of exploration or a delayed sense of identity, okay, or a, um, a delayed sense of self of who they are. 
So in this um, time, it's more of exploring of different things. What do I like? Who am I? Giving them the opportunity to explore in a secure and safe environment, different things. This is why it's a great time now to start joining different clubs, maybe trying different um, sports or activities. Volunteering is a great um, opportunity, reading different content. So just kind of exploring, right? Um, into seeing what are your interests, what do you like, um, things like that is very important versus if they don't get the opportunity or don't get the opportunity to do that now, there tends to be later on um, a little bit more of that, un that uh, it's not clear um, who they are, that sense of self, okay? Then the next one is intimacy versus isolation. And this happens between around 20 to 30 years old. And this is when they start committing to closer um, sharing relationships. They tend to start looking for um, a, a little bit more an intimate relationships with others and establishing more longer term relationships. Um, and then this could be also like the opposite. So, well, excuse me, for and their intimacy, they're also kind of surrendering a little bit their independence so that they can be more with like establishing a relationship that is more intimate and becoming like one, right? Um, versus the opposite, which would be the isolation, is that they tend to be more independent, they're more isolated, kind of shy away from more intimate relationships with others, okay? Leave some space for the pros and cons. Then generativity versus stagnation. This happens around 30 to 50 years old. And this is like considered the middle adult. This is a time when they start concerning themselves with establishing and guiding for the next generation. It's kind of wanting to leave their mark right on the world, kind of knowing that like the end is not that near, but it's not that far either. And kind of establishing themselves in society and for future generations versus um, them feeling the stagnation part is the feeling unfulfilled or they become a lot more self-centered. Um, and so there's the successes and unsuccesses, leave some space for that. And last but not least is the integrity versus despair. This happens usually about um, when they're a lot older, 50 or plus, okay? And then this one is either like the integrity is feeling like they accept life, they live, they have no major regrets, um, they, you know, appreciate their experiences, the good and the bad, versus the despair part, which is, that they feel literal despair because they know time is running out and they have a lot more regrets. Um, they're afraid of death. Um, and so leave some space for the rest. And that's basically it. So I'm gonna show you guys this chart and I hope it's coming out in the video notes because you definitely need to know from this is you need to know about the different important events that are happening during each stage and what's um, what's kind of occurring. Like for infancy, it's the feeding and comfort for early childhood, which is the autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is toilet training and dressing. Preschool, the initiative versus guilt is exploration. The industry versus inferiority is school. So you get that. So I want you to make sure that you have this in your notes. It's very important because there's always that connection of what are the major events that are happening during this time okay also you may want to include what are some questions that are being asked that we ask ourselves during these different stages and then here is the outcome you have your pro your positive outcomes and your negative outcomes okay you could screenshot it pause it write it whatever you like now i'm also going to show you the next one because this one is a little bit more like in your face, right, of, but it's missing like the events that happen, okay? And it's that successful and unsuccessful outcome for each one. 
make sure to pause the video, write those things down. You definitely need to know because you will have a scenario in which they'll be like, okay, there's an adult that doesn't trust people. What stage, you know, did they have, were they unsuccessful, right? They kind of got that mistrust, okay? So that's basically it for this one and make sure to write these things down. I'll be looking for that. All right, guys, have a wonderful evening or day. Ah, I'll stop it.